Hi, welcome to Sugar Free. This is a general look at 2024. Woohoo! Here's my little stack of cards. I've got here the uh, Major Arcana of the Ancient Italian Tarot, Major Arcana of the Rider Waite, and here I've got the Minor Arcana of the Rider Waite split into its suits. So I'm going to pull three Major Arcana from the uh, Ancient Italian Tarot to get a kind of big picture look. Um, and then I'm going to clarify with one from each suit of the Minor Arcana of the Rider Waite. And possibly like cap things off with some major arcana from the right away. So let's go. Everything's shuffled. I've been sitting in the kitchen. It's uh it's gone wine o'clock. <laughs> it's like a little glass, having a little shuffle, looking at some bits and pieces online. And uh I did do a version of this reading. I I I, I did I did this reading uh the other day. But it wasn't suitable for broadcast. It just the energy just wasn't right. Um, but my sense of what's coming in in 2024 is the same as it was a few days ago. It was just that the delivery was a bit shit, basically. So I didn't upload it. But it's time to do it again. And um, my sense for 2024 is that stuff that has been up in the air in holding patterns lands, essentially. And, you know, that sets off all sorts of implications for all sorts of things. I mean, for those who have been waiting for the shoe to drop, if you like, it drops. <laughs> and um, for those who have been maintaining the holding patterns for their own benefit, uh, it's not so good. Things kind of crystallize things. Uh, it's like a, a pot of bubbling stew and then the heat goes out from underneath it. It stops bubbling and uh, starts to form like crusts on the top. Things crustate in 2024, they crystallize, they land. And, uh, you know, it's a story as ever of uh, consequences, things being set in motion, but possible upshots never actually haven't been thought through or even expected or foreseen. Um, but when those things do land, it's absolutely clear what they are. And everyone can see it. So that's what I'm getting for next year. So let's have a little look. In the light of that, and I am, you know, in a sense, pulling on my own kind of intuition. It sounds really rude, doesn't it? <laughs> um, that's what this pull is about. So let's have a little look. The first card I'm going to pull from the Major Arcana is uh, the kind of immediate energetic environment as we go into 2024. The second will be the uh, hidden energy. The third will be the big picture, uh, potential karmic upshot. And to quote my uh, second favorite reader on YouTube, I say potential because I cannot predict free will. So let's go. Uh, I'm taking reversals here in the majors, uh, not in the minors. Chariot in the reverse. Hidden energy. Moon in reverse. How interesting. That is what I was saying. Stuff that's been obscured and unclear and um, like pseudo facts several times reflected. No, clarifying, clarifying, clarifying. And it becoming clear that um, we've been kind of to a certain extent stumbling around in the dark, like um, barking at, barking at the moon. <laughs> uh, yeah, and stuff like bubbling up from the depths and that's that lobster. That's that lobster. Finally up from the depths, boiled I was going to say to within an inch of its life, but no, well out the other side of that and served up on a flipping platter. Now, I think the reason the lobster appears in uh, traditional depictions of the moon is because they live a very, very long time. They live much, much longer. They have some sort of genetic like anomaly feature that makes them live much longer than other crustacea for their size. 
So they like roam around, they like bootle around on the, they like bimble around on the, the bed of the ocean for a long time, a very, very long time. So this is like old stuff bubbling up. Here it's it's all in the reverse. It's wonderful, wonderful. Okay, and big picture energy. The hanged man. Oh, a whole new way of looking at something coming in, but it's not going to be an easy process. We're coming in with the chariot in reverse here. This is like blocked forward motion, a sort of stuttering progress. <laughs> like a really rocky road and really hard wheels. It's not comfortable, not comfortable, difficulty making headway. And then whew, this, this is like the tide fucking going out on something. I'm going to put on this first. Let's get one from the pentacles. Okay, we've got four of pentacles. That did come out in the reverse, but I said I wasn't taking reversals in the minors. Oh, shall I? Oh, it's a bit too late. I'll bet stick with it. But anyway, we've got something being held back here. Um, an unwillingness to invest, basically. And uh yeah, expansion not happening, but not by uh external forces per se, but perhaps the interpretation of external forces. Yeah, you know, the world's got its ass clenched, hasn't it? really um and you know if i was taking reversals here i'd say again oof, like big release <laughs> you think about when you got your ass clenched and then you have a big a big release you know it's, it can be a little bit mucky and i mean the moon you know it's great to see the tide go out or something but what the fuck's going to be left on the beach that's the thing you know it's it's a bit it's it's all pretty murky it's all pretty murky and uh there's a matter here of um the flow, the pentacly flow of power, of like the the back and forth, the interaction or the transactional energy blocked, blocked through choice. And it's only fear really can do that. And that's why trade is so important in the world. Trade is a, a kind of a mark of confidence. You know, the willingness to invest, the willingness to speculate. The willingness to uh, like spend the dinari, you know, uh, that's been held back, and it's very much linked with this uh, with this chariot in reverse here. Let's keep going. Oh, hmm. Is that it another way? Yeah, I'm going to pull the um, the pentacle on this one now. Pulling the pentacle. Okay. Right. Well, that came out of the reverse. Did I not do reversals? In the minors. <laughs> Clearly I am. But yes, yeah, slow, slow moving energy, really, really like turgid. Really turgid. And and sort of muddy, like trudging through the bloody mud with nothing solid underfoot. It's really sticky, slow progress. I know you can't see me, but I've got my like my fingers over my brows and my head down. It's just like, oh, such hard work. Such hard work. And we're going to find out more about the nature of this. I think something in the next card I'm going to put on this, I'm going straight onto it, is going to tell us why. And this is the swords. All right. So this is about how things are expressed and described. Oh. Of swords, so much fear around, so much fear, and um, a, a narrative of being trapped, a narrative of there being no other way, a narrative of being bound, a narrative of not being able to see, fear of the future fear of the wider environment. And I mean, I've just noticed, I've never noticed this before in this card. Look what's behind there up on the hill. There's a really nice place up there, but we're kind of banished out into this like fucking swamp for this kind of ritualized uh, fear-based 
behavior. Is this actually being kind of um, promulgated? I think we're going to find out here. Yeah. Um, right, I'm going to, I'm just going to keep going now. So the cup card for this uh, lack of forward motion. I mean, I'm not surprised there's lack of forward motion when this is being pumped into us all the bloody time. Can't see any other way. But I mean, look at the ground that those swords are stuck in it. As I say, it's boggy, it's swampy. They'll come out, you could bl fucking blow them over. But it is, this is ritualized fear-based behavior. And she's as much bought into it as the people who've told her she's she's got to stand out there. Like well in the cold, her feet are probably getting wet. And, you know, it's, it's oh, fucking hell. Right. <laughs> Three of cups. Well, that did come up in the in the upright. This is what we're losing out on in this very turgid fear-based energy. We're losing out on the joy of, of, of connection and our attention is being turned away from, um, from the fact that we are all, we are all in the same boat. What are we, in a small boat crossing the English Channel or a multi-million pound yacht paid for by public money on dodgy deals at the highest level in PPE to help stop people's loved ones fucking dying? What boat are we in? We're all in this boat. Because no matter how rich or poor we are, we're all going the same bloody way. And our, our vision is being turned away from that and turned kind of in on ourselves with this ritualized fear-based narrative. And we just feel like we're just trudging through the mud. Right. I think I'm going to go over here now. Yep, I'm going over here now. Nine of Pentacles. Okay. So what we see in this whole new way of looking at things. But what's it going to take? That's what we're going to find out here. Because the hanged man represents that. The hanged man represents stepping out of the normal flow of things, which ain't fucking flowing anywhere. And looking at things in a very different way, like running thought experiments, understanding, uh, 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 understanding that um, we are not always right. <laughs> and being OK with that. Go us. Um, and yeah, looking at things in from a, a fresh perspective, but not not because we think it, you know it might just be a nice thing to do, because something has got to the point where that is the only sensible thing to do is take ourselves out of the flow and think, hold on a minute, I need to have a word with myself. That's what we've got here, and the card that follows this, this is card number twelve, is thirteen. Tredici, the death card. And that's what we become aware of. We become aware of the unending nature of things ending, beginning, ending, beginning, and changing. It's just change. That's all there is. And what we gain here is the freedom and the security in the Nine of Pentacles that comes with a really deep level acceptance of that unending change. It sets us free. It's only when we are kind of ego attached to the notion of a particular outcome in something that we experience any fear at all. Because if we let go of our investment in a particular potential outcome, 
and we open ourselves up to this joyous uh, democracy here. And we, we lose all fear. We lose all fear. Because if it doesn't go this way, it will go some other way. <laughs> our job in life is not to make things go a certain way for our own pleasure or our own benefit. Our job in life is to become more and more peaceful and resilient in the face of unending change. That's our job. And that's what's on offer here in the Nine of Pentacles. We have a very securely and beautifully bordered estate here over which we uh, preside. And we have a bird's eye view because we've got that hawk there. Our investments are, are good. They're growing. We're comfortable. We're bounded. And like we're cool. Very nice. Very, very nice. And that is to do with, with, with letting go of, yeah, the fear of things not working out the way we want them to and the fear of others. And that's what causes this, this um, that, that's the price. That's the price we pay. We lose this. We don't get this. We don't get the genuine joyful party <laughs> of being alive and being human together, we don't get that when we're in this fear-based ship because we fear each other. We fear each other. And uh, we look at other people as if they are potentially dangerous, like um, counterproductive agents in our lives. <laughs> and that's how we end up fearing other people and holding on and holding on and holding on, holding on. You know, sooner or later, I mean, he either at some point like accepts a kind of, you know, speculative wager and releases some of that power he's got there. Or he dies with it and it dies with him. Those are your choices. But fearing that others can like F things up for you because it has to be this way. This outcome has to be, whatever it is for you, has to be attained. And other people are kind of marching and some of them are for you and some of them are against you. And blah, 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 blah. Oh, there we are, eight of swords. Nothing can grow like that, nothing. Can you grow in here? All right, let's go on here. Um... Hold on, where was I? I didn't pull a wand card. Oh, how odd. Um, now, how am I going to run this, dear viewer, dear listener? This wand card here, I can either put here or here. I'm going to put it here because it's not for nothing. And I'm going to pull the next one and stick it in there. Shall I? Shall I do it like that? So I could change the whole direction of the reading. No, I'm going to stick it in here. <laughs> As I was thinking that, I thought, what would I do if the one card that I pulled, like, completely, like, counteracted this narrative that I've built here in this incomplete, like, error-strewn structure? Well, what, it's not error-strewn, it's just one big error. But what if it's a, like a really nice, peaceful, happy wand card? <laughs> and I've got that. <laughs> Five of ones, that's cool. Yeah, I'll stick that in there. Useless, futile, fruitless, winnerless, loseless battles. Really feeds in to this Eight of Swords. Yeah, just much more backs it up. You know, the fives are unstable. Uh, the four of ones is, is a, a, you know, ostensibly very stable structure. Um, chuck in one more wand and you've like upset the apple cart again. You've upset the energy again. And then, you know, you can never have something so because it's three or two or one or four. 
there's no like there's no symmetry here so everything kind of like you know woo, it goes that way and then woo, it goes that way. and it's just this constant this is the bubbling pot here okay let's get the wands on this ah there we go whatever we win in a battle like this is only ever temporary and sooner or later we will have to defend it because the six of we've got seven of ones here the six of ones um implicitly here um is is victory so someone does come out on top from this five of five of ones but once you've won that victory this reminds me of something that the uh, french mystic catholic mystic and philosopher simone Weil, who died in kent at the age of 34 um part way through world war ii um died in kent in southeast england i visited her grave and she's got wonderful philosophy she said this thing about uh, about power she said once you have gained power which is what we see we see a power struggle here in the five of wands and then we see six of wands you know some power has been gained by some agency once you have gained power you have two options you either give it back or seed it let it go or you put your energy into um, maintaining it. And that's what we see here in the Seven of Wands. It's, it's just, it's never going to end because you cannot keep it. You can't fucking keep it. Four of Pentacles. And this is the truth that washes up on the tide when this moon goes into reverse and the tide goes out. This is what ends up crustating, crustulating on the beaches as they dry as the tide of 2023 goes out you get what you want have what you want like acquire what you want win what you want you will always have to defend it the only win that you never have to defend is the inner win the win of um like i was gonna say conquering like yourself learning to ride the horse of your own life and your own mind that's the only real win and that's the win that will really you know that's the win that kind of removes the the really heavy armor from that night and and reduces the weight on that horse and that horse can begin to move more swiftly and more lightly when you've learned to ride the horse of your own life of your own mind and not being ridden by it and finding yourself doing things that aren't good for you you just can't flip an help it that's a real win that's real growth but in terms of the jostle for power and the 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 criteria on which power is um, judged and kind of graded and measured is this. How much have you got? How much have you got? What are you worth? That material stuff only ever has to be defended again and again and again. It's an absolute flipping mugs game. Like have what you need and like a few nice things but if you're invested in like getting new shit and like heaping up your wealth for its own sake, this is what awaits you. An endless battle to maintain it. Mm. Queen of Swords. I was going to say uh, Sugar Free has spoken and there's the Queen of Swords. Basically, that just card, that card just says, yeah, uh, I'm right. It's not going to be fun. Page of Cups. I've got a thing I said Page of Swords. I don't think I did. Page of Cups. <laughs> Be prepared to find happiness and connection in the smallest of things. You know, this is not a big fish. It's a little fish. But it's a fish nonetheless, and it's genuinely offered 
and it's fresh and it's it's generous. This is generosity. And it's lovely and there's no agenda here. There's no agenda. And I said that uh, I was, wasn't going to say anything more about the Queen of Swords, but I am. Because the, the Queen of Swords is uh, is in listening mode here. She's in listening mode. She's beckoning her interlocutor to uh, come closer so that she can listen to them and speak to them. And then she's going to like take a decision. And that's the King of Swords when the mind has been made up. But it, it's still mutable here. But it's very clear and it's very powerful. And I mean, while there is, um, you know, I described a person off screen in this card who's being like beckoned forward. And there's nothing sort of supplicatory about that beckoning that she's doing. It's like, come, 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 come. It's like an order. And while I described that person off, off, uh, off screen there as an interlocutor, which makes it sound rather equal, but there's nothing equal about this. This is powerful speech. This is the Shakti of powerful speech. And I mean, in, uh, in Vedic and yogic lore, there is an entire goddess devoted to speech. And originally her name was Vak, V-A-C, and that's where all our words like uh, voice and vocal come from. Um, and later she was morphed into, she was kind of put in um, with uh, the Shakti of learning and study and science and music and all that and became Saraswati. But the Shakti of voice, the goddess of voice and speech, Vak, that's what this is. So this is blessed, this whole thing. It's blessed. And um, on the emotional front, on the heart front, Yeah, this is this is this the, the page of cups there is about being able to engage with um a sort of range of of meaning in terms of how you interact with others. You know, you it's about broadening the vision and being generous in your heart um to those you might not normally consider worth engaging with because that's the kind of like power shit in itself isn't it you know being shut off to certain people and shut off to certain viewpoints and shut off to the like emotional um truth of people who are different from us that's like creating a hierarchy, trying to work out who's got the power. And that is also a thing you end up having to defend and defend and defend, especially if you're coming at it from this fear-based energy. So like open the range, extend your range in terms of how and with whom you connect. And like I said, it's generosity of spirit here. It's very beautiful. Right, let's carry on with this. Okay. King of Wands. I almost suddenly saw her as the queen, but we've got two, two royals now. Two royals on the table. Oh, wow. There is so much that can be done and achieved. Very, very industrious. Very, but for a really good, like, growth spurt. This is a full-on growth spurt, but it's it's not the ace of wands like a growth spurt built on inspiration or some sort of like chance thing just popping out. This is a growth spurt in the king of wands, kind of real forward motion. Bloody turns this chariot the right way up. I tell you that for nothing. It's it. This is based on and predicated on experience and on pre-existing um, structures that have already been built in our lives and that we can use to, um, how can I say, to sort of establish further projects. I'm just channeling that, and I know it's probably really awkward, like boring language, but 
there's real forward motion here, a real capacity. But as I say, it's not capacity that's come by chance or capacity that you're just discovering. It's capacity that already exists. And we know that because he's sitting on the throne and not like balancing on something. That's the King of Cups. Let's see who comes out in the swords. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And this boundaried freedom here of the Nine of Pentacles. This is what we see when we engage with, with this Shakti here. And step out of this um, ritualized, fear-based position in the Eight of Swords. Okay, Two of Swords. It's all about choice. It's all about choice. This is like the slide indoors card. It's all about choice. And when we go down one road, we don't go down the other one. And even if in going down road A and not going down road B, we get a certain way down road A and we think, oh, I think I should have gone down road B. It's all right. I'll turn around and go back. And yeah, you go down road B, you turn around and go back and go down road B, but you will forever have been down road A. You will. You just will. You cannot undo that. And those choices, those sliding doors choices can take your life in a completely different direction. And my God, if I uh, decided to spend time telling you some stories about that from my own experience, how one tiny choice often a tiny choice i can certainly think of one situation a tiny choice that wasn't actually about anything particularly interesting or good even but i took a tiny little choice about something and it led to a, a chance like situation that defined the rest of my life and it's still being defined by it. it was one tiny little choice. And that's what we see here. That's the power of that. You can go down that ace of swords or you can go down that ace of swords. I mean, the ace of swords, the essence of, um, of thought and speech is what it is, what it is. But that's the essence. But as soon as you move away from the uh, or move beyond the awareness of that essence of the power of uh, thought and speech you become aware that there are a multiplicity there is a multiplicity of options there you can say to somebody oh hi how are you doing it's really nice to see you or you can say to somebody you all right mm -hmm. and that choice is is going to is going to change what subsequently comes out of that exchange the multiplicity of options the, the options are endless and irrevocable okay <laughs> that's the main thing i'm getting from this and what we have to deal with because we can't you can't sit here forever with your hands crossed over your heart and a blindfold you cannot you know, that tide's going to come up and get you wet. You have to take a choice. I mean, this is a bit like the lover's card in the major arcana. And as soon as you do that, you have to deal with the potential heartbreak, and that's the three of swords, of having made the wrong choice. Okay, You've got to have the courage to uh, go one way or another, not just based on this Eight of Swords, ritualized fear-based behavior, and this uh, right ridiculous power battle. And even if you win it, as I say, you're going to spend the rest of your life defending it. You can't stay in that holding pattern forever. As I said, think the holding pattern's over and stuff's coming into land. And uh, it's really beautiful. It's really beautiful, but it's a little bit scary. <laughs> We've got two blindfolds now on the table. How interesting. I mean, this eight of swords is sort of like aggravated two of swords energy. Here, it's the matter of, well, I could go this way and I could go that way. 
And I don't know what the consequences of either of those choices is going to be. Um, I can't do nothing and I can't have both of them. So I've got to take a choice. Right. Hold your nose. Tally ho. Eight of Swords is aggravated that it's like, oh, my God, it's like anxiety. I can't see a way forward. I don't know what to do. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. No, you're not. You're not. There's, there's, there's going to be some other big picture I need to pull out of this. Oh, well, anyway, right. Let me get the cup card for this, the nine of cups. Being aware of the power of the connection here in the three. And it is really powerful when people gather together for no other reason than that they think it's a good thing to do. All right. <laughs> And it's just all the kind of status things get dropped because there's a shared motivation to actually be in that space together. And that in and of itself connects us. And the willingness to look beyond uh, the fish, <laughs> the willingness to, to look beyond our own kind of hierarchy of value makes us incredibly wealthy in our heart it means we've got a lot to give and how lovely we've got two nines here how lovely it frees up stepping out of this and anxiety putting down this wand realizing that basically whatever we do, we are always going to be like, this is like King Canute. We haven't got the King of Cups on the table. This is like King Canute. They were always going to be coming at you to take it off you. If your attitude towards your own power in the world is kind of miserly, it's terrible debilitation, miserliness and greed. And just wanting to hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you, we've got to see ourselves in the correct, like sort of place. You, you've got to see yourself for what you are, and not kid ourselves that we have more or less power than 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 we think we do, or than than we actually have. You know, one really, really easy way to make yourself unhappy is to believe yourself more powerful than you are and become unhappy when it's disproved to you. Or to believe yourself less powerful than you really are and become unhappy when it's disproved to you. But that's more subtle. That's much more subtle. And that's being able to see where you have deemed yourself less powerful than you actually are. And seeing how that has played out in your life, like playing small, dumbing yourself down, keeping yourself like in check and pretending that, that you have less to offer than you actually do. Because this is really about some power exchange here in terms of how things are seen and described in the Queen of Swords. And that's why the, 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 the Page of Cups is here, to remind us that there are little gains to be made in terms of our happiness and our emotional well-being. There are little gains to be made here, there, and everywhere. I mean, that fish probably didn't take a whole heap of landing. It's not really huge. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty standard, but it's offered in good faith and it's fresh. It's wonderful. Don't, don't look a gift horse in the mouth, basically. Broaden your horizons in terms of this is the turning point. This is the fulcrum as per, uh, what, as is so often the case in these readings. This seven of, of ones here moving to this queen of swords. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. You know, if there's if there's a chance for happiness in one little encounter with somebody at a flipping bus stop, 
take it, have it, enjoy it, and give that enjoyment back to them. And you will brighten everybody's day, your own day and other people's day in ways that you couldn't possibly have imagined. And that is emotional wealth. Right. Um, I was going to say I wanted to get some big sort of like overarching thing about how this this blocking and this intentional because I kept saying ritualized fear based behavior. And when something is ritualized, rituals are carried out in a group setting. And I mean, this has been constructed by more people than her. I mean, she's she's gone along with it because she's part of the ritual. She believes in this shit. But, you know, those ropes that were put around her, the uh, the blindfold and the swords being stuck in and being taken out there and blah, 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 blah. She didn't she didn't do all that by herself. There is group action implied here. And I was going to say, you know, who stands to profit from this? But I think we all know, don't we? It's pretty bloody obvious. But when this energy kicks in of the Queen of Swords, the whole reading changes direction. And it really is a, a, a change in the tide in terms of how things are thought of and described. And it opens up this beautiful energy. But the, the the one card, the most challenging card, I think, on the table is this Two of Swords in the context of everything else that's going on in this row. Because to unlock this Queen of Pentacles energy by taking a different view, to unlock this forward motion based on pre-existing experience and work already done, that is unlocked by the uh, by the hanged man, and to really, really get to this like this place where you have so much to give you, it's just an embarrassment of riches here for us as an individual, for our own heart. In order to unlock all this, you have to be brave enough to understand that going down road A instead of road B means that for the rest of your life, you will have gone down road A first. And that is a road B. You don't know what the what the implications of that are. None of us knows. None of us knows. So, you know, that takes a bit of metal, M-E-T-T-L-E. -T -T -E. That takes a bit of bloody courage. And it's the same courage. That is what turns his chariot the right way up. It's the same metal. It's the same guts. It's the same solar plexus energy. It's here in the King of Wands. And it's kind of, you know, pissed up the wall in the five of ones and just like really like, do I have to do this shit? This like for the rest of my life might be fighting off people who want to come take my shit. Really? That solar plexus action energy through sheer force of will here is, the, is very, very echoed in the courage it takes to say to yourself, right, I can't stay on the beach all day. I'm going to, like, tide's coming in. I'm cold. I'm wet. I'm hungry. I need to take a choice. So I'm going to take a choice. You know, sometimes that takes some guts because some of it is full-on flipping life-changingly irrevocable and irrevocably life-changing. Let's get some major arcana to cap these three rows off. Fortune favours the brave, basically. Not the reckless, the brave. So bravery involves being frightened and pushing forward anyway. Look at that. Okay. Just in what way? Yeah, that came up in the reverse for me, so I'm going to put it in the reverse for you. Sorry, I always had to think twice when it's the hanged man, about the orientation of the hanged man. How interesting. So here in this stuck energy, there is no other way of seeing it. It's a really turgid energy and it's, it's, it's very grim and it's sort of quite depressive. It's quite depressive because, and, and, and yeah, and depressed because it's not connected 
to reality. It's not connected to light. It's not connected to fresh air. It's like being down in a fucking tunnel. And there's no illumination. Because, I mean, you don't see it in this depiction here. But here in the in the ride away, the hangman's, you know, he's lit up, mate. Because he's looked at things in a different way. But here, that is actively not happening. Okay. Look at that. The Empress, I was going on about Shakti, wasn't I? There she is. Queen of them all. Queen of them all, the Empress. Growth, fecundity. She's down here. She's in this post, like, seven of wands fulcrum point of this reading. I was talking about an embarrassment of, of, of wealth, an embarrassment of riches here. And look, here's her little cousin. The nine of pentacles, they're so similar. Such a similar energy. She's like the queen of pentacles as well. As I said, growth, fecundity, proliferation and the, of the good sort. Um, and there's something cyclical for me today in this Empress card. It's something seasonal. It's harvest. <laughs> Growth and harvest. It's not agriculture so much. No, she's way too wild for that. But the, the right stuff grows in the right places. All right? That's what I'm getting off the Empress. And here, oh, how wonderful. Temperance. Temperance. Well, what I was saying about this Two of Swords, the challenge of this in the context of, of this reading and in the context of um, 2024, the challenge of having the guts and the metal and the core strength to choose your direction and fully acknowledging that you, you chose it. Take off that blindfold and move forward in one direction or another with to the best of your ability. And the, 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 the the reward for that is so, like, you know, doesn't it balance it out? Doesn't it? Because this is 14. This is what follows death. Okay. Very interesting. Death is uh, implicitly present on the table because the outcome... This precedes it, and this follows it. And this is the peace of mind that you have when you are self-contained. And I say that self-contained because we've got those two vessels there and just this endless peaceful pouring from one side to the other. When you are self-containedly confident in your own awareness of, management of, and progress through the unending change that we live in. But you can only become confident in that and peaceful and self-contained within that if you've got the metal to move one way or the other and turn that reverse chariot the right way up. And if you've got the metal to... Um, step out of this and if you've got the metal to um, put down that ace because you know that ace of wands that single wand that is being like woo, woo. <laughs> get off my land <laughs> possessiveness you should put it down because you know you can't take it with you and the right thing will happen at the right time that takes some guts, mate. That takes some guts. But you can only develop those guts and, like, get in that, like, bucket, that gilded bucket with flipping wheels on it. Huzzah! And move forward. 
you can only do it when you have come to terms fully, happily, and uh, self-containedly uh, with the reality of um, the unending nature and unpredictability of change. The right thing at the right time. Everything has its season. Right. I'm going to leave that there. Uh, have a wonderful uh, 2024. I uh, hope you'll come back again uh, for future readings. If you don't, I wish you all the best. And if you do, I also wish you all the best. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.